Welcome back, everyone. Today we are talking about deflections and how to calculate them using the principle of virtual work. So for this video, we'll specifically focus on trusses and there'll be a follow-up video looking at beams and frames. So let's dive into trusses. The method we'll use today is based on something called the principle of virtual work, which states that the total work done by a set of forces in equilibrium on any kinematically admissible displacement is equal to zero. So to illustrate this, let's first consider a structure. Here is our potato structure, and I'm going to load that potato with a concentrated force here, P, and some distributed load over here, W, and maybe I even have a concentrated moment, M, located right there. Now, I would like to calculate my displacements, let's say right here on this potato, and let's call that displacement delta R, but I don't know what that is. But I can, however, calculate what are my strains throughout the entire structure, epsilon r. Now we'll call this system the real system. So the subscript r stands for real, and it's going to provide what we call a kinematically admissible displacement field. So kinematically admissible just means that it follows the laws of physics, so it satisfies the boundary conditions, it doesn't have weird jumps, so it's a nice continuous function. And obviously the real displacements are kinematically admissible, otherwise they couldn't happen in the physical world. So the next thing that we need is a set of forces in equilibrium. So that set of forces in equilibrium, I'm going to consider a second identical structure. And the second identical structure, I'm going to put a load of one in the direction and at the location where I want to calculate my displacement. Now, for this system, I can still do a structural analysis on this, and I'm going to calculate something over the structure called sigma i. So that's going to be my stresses throughout the structure for the unit load. So this is sometimes called the virtual system or the unit load system. And the subscript i stands for Roman numeral i, which represents the fact that we have a load of one on that structure. Now we get to apply the principle of virtual work, which st states that the total work of my set of forces in equilibrium. Both of these sets are in equilibrium, but I'm gonna choose this one over here. On any kinematically admissible displacements, well, the displacements of this system are kinematically admissible. So combining those two, the work still has to be zero. So work of zero really just means that the work external is equal to the work internal. Now external work is just force multiplied by distance. So I'll be considering my forces from my system in equilibrium, my virtual system, and I'll be considering my displacements and strains from my real system, my kinematically admissible system. So my external work is just the force of one multiplied by the real displacement, delta R, and the internal work is going to then be my strain energy over my entire volume, where I'm going to be considering my stresses in my virtual system, multiplied by the strains in my real system. And again, I'm integrating over that entire volume. Now, obviously we can see that this is one, so that cancels out. And that leaves us with the expression for the displacement at the location where I place that unit load. So the real displacement, the displacement of this structure here is therefore equal to the strain energy as though I'm calculating stresses per this system and the strains per my real system. So let's apply this to a truss so that we have a little bit better grasp of what this means in the real world. So if I look at a truss, we'll just take one single truss element, it has length L, and it has a axial force of N applied to that truss. We can find the stresses and strains of that element. So the stresses are simply the axial force N divided by the cross-sectional area and the strains are going to be that stress then divided by the modulus, so that's N divided by A times E. Now we can apply this idea to the principle of virtual work. So if I calculate my real displacements, I'm going to integrate over all my volume. So when we have trusses, we really have some collection of elements. So I'm gonna sum over all my elements. So each element of my truss is going to have one term in the summation, and I'm going to be integrating over the length of each element from zero to L. And then I'm first going to consider my stresses in that element from my unit load system. So those stresses are going to be N sub I, where the I stands for the unit load system, and N is standing for my axial forces calculated in that system, divided by A, that gives me a stress. 
And then I need a strain from the real system. So that's NR, my real internal forces, divided by AE. And I'm going to integrate over the volume. So my delta omega here is going to turn into an A dx, assuming that A is constant along the cross-sectional length. And here my A's will cancel. Now, one of the nice things about truss analysis is NI and NR are constant over any element. So this integral just breaks down to a simple expression where I'm going to add up over all my elements, NI times NR times the length of that element divided by EA. And therefore that is a way that I can calculate my displacement at any location in the truss by finding the internal forces for two different systems. For my real system, the actual loads that are applied, and for a unit load system where the unit load is applied at the location where I want to calculate my displacements. So let's do just that in an example problem. So for this example, I want to calculate my vertical displacement here at location F. So I want to calculate that displacement under the loads where I have five kips at location B, four kips down at location C. The structure is made of steel, so we have a Young's modulus of 29,000 KSI, and everything has a cross-sectional area of two square inches. So to solve the system, I need to consider two separate problems, my real system and my virtual system or unit load system. So for the real system, I'm going to solve a structural analysis for the real loads. And then for my virtual system, I'm going to solve another structural analysis for just a unit load applied there at location F. And notice that that unit load doesn't actually have a unit at all, it's just one. And we'll see how that cult comes out later. So we'll just leave that thing unitless. So after going through all the rigor of solving for all of your internal forces in two separate trusses, we find that we have NR, the real system internal forces throughout the structure. And we have NI, which are the internal forces for my virtual or unit load system. So that analysis is probably the hardest part of this problem, the fact that we have to do two full truss analyses to find the displacement at one location, but that's the nature of the method. So after we've calculated that, which if you're interested, you can see the previous video on that topic, we're going to tabulate all the results throughout the structure. So our tabulated results, we have NR in each of the elements, that's the real axial forces for the real loads, and I, which is the axial forces under the unit load. Length of each element, now everything is six feet long in this particular example, so that's all 72 inches. And then I can multiply those three numbers together. So an NR and I times L, that will have units of kip inches. Now, if we wanna find the displacement, in this case, displacement R represents the vertical displacement at the location of the unit load, which is located at F. And this is going to be the summation over all elements of NI, NR times L divided by EA. And I can see that I can just add up this entire column of numbers to get NI, NR over L. The summation of that is 1728, and that has units of kip inches. So now let's finish off that problem. The E modulus and A cross sectional area were the same for everything, so I just pull that out of the summation. And here I have 1728 kip inches divided by my modulus of 29,000 KSI and the cross sectional area of two inches squared. And if we evaluate that, we find it's 0 0.0298 inches. So physically, that represents my displacement at location F has a magnitude of 0 0.0298 inches. It's acting down because that's the direction of my unit load. And if I had switched the direction of that unit load, I would have found that my displacement was a negative 0 0.0298. So it just means I drew my unit load in the wrong direction. Now that was quite a bit of work to find the displacement at one specific location, but fortunately the method is quite repetitive if you want to look at other locations. So let's say for example, I want to look at the horizontal displacement at location E going to the left. So I can place a unit load at location E going to the left. And the only thing I have to redo for that problem is get a new set of NI because obviously the real system is still going to be the same. So 
I would recalculate this column of numbers. I would have to recalculate my summation here, and then I could find another displacement at some other location, and this time in the horizontal direction. And we can repeat that for any location of interest that we like. And that wraps up using principal virtual work for trusses. As always, I hope you learned something. So please subscribe and I will see you next time.